This question from AP Physics B, um, 1988 FRQ. And now these sections are covered in AP Physics 2. So in this question, they say that the circuit shown above includes a switch S, which, ha which can be closed to connect the um, three microfarad capacitor in parallel with a 10 ohm resistor or open to disconnect the capacitor from the circuit. So there are two cases. One case, switch S is open. The capacitor is not connected. Under the, these conditions, determine the current in the battery or the maximum current through the battery, the current in the 10 ohm, ohm resistor and the potential difference across the 10 ohm resistor. So if the, um, the battery, if the switch is um, open and the capacitor is disconnected, then the circuit would look like this. And if it would be like, if there would be no capacitor at all. So if I call these two points, this one is A and this one is B, then I see that there are two resistors connected in series. And I'm going to replace those two resistors with one resistor, equivalent resistor. Because they are connected in series, I'm going to calculate their total resistance by adding their resistances. So the total resistance of these two is going to be 12 ohm. Then I still have that point A and that point B. And then I have 4 ohm resistor and the other 6 ohm resistor and the battery of 72 volts. So the current, the maximum current that they were asking is leaving the battery and going this way. When it reaches point A, I can also call this one as a point A. I don't have to keep point A at that position because the wire, anywhere on the wire, these points are the points A. So this could be my point A and this could be my point B. So anywhere on this wire, any point um, could be called point B. And I'm going to erase this quickly and have it connected like this. So um, since the current is leaving the battery, when it reaches the point A, it has to split into two currents, one through the 4 ohm resistor and one through the 12 ohm resistor, the equivalent resistor of those two earlier that we had. And that means some voltage is going to be dropped on the first resistor, 6 ohm resistor. But the voltage on AB is going to be the same for both resistors, for 4 and 12. So in order for me to be able to calculate the, um, the total resistance, I need the total resistance to calculate the total current, this current right here. So I'm going to do one more um, switch of the circuits and I'm going to simplify uh, these circuits, that one and this one, because they are connected in parallel. I can replace those two circuits with one, those two resistors with one resistor and it's going to be again the equivalent resistor of those two. And because they are in parallel, I can calculate the total resistance as 1 over 1 over the result flip over. The actual formula for the total resistance would be 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. But in the classroom, every time we solve these questions, we say 1 over 1 over the result flip over. So if they are parallel, I have 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12, those two parallel resistors. And then my result is going to be common denominator is two, 12. So I have to times the first fraction by 3 in the numerator and the denominator. And that will give me 4 in the numerator. So it's 1 over 1 over my result flip over. So the total resistance of these two 
is going to be 3 ohm, 12 over 4. And then I have one more resistor, which is 6 ohm resistor. Um, the point A and the point B are still there. And then I have the battery. And the battery is 72 volts. So now I have these two resistors in series and I can calculate the current that is leaving the battery, this current I. So this current is going to be the voltage uh, from Ohm's law. So you have the voltage is equal to I times R. So if I want to calculate the current, it's the voltage, which is 72, divided by the total resistance of those two, which is 9. So the current is going to be 8 amps. So the current leaving this uh, battery is 8 amps. Because I know this is 8 amps, I can calculate the voltage dropped on the first resistor, 6 ohm resistor. And that voltage is going to be I times R from Ohm's law. So I times R gives me 48 volt. So what you have to think is um, there are little aliens leaving the battery. When they are leaving the battery, all of them will pass through, um, let me make a different color. All of them will pass through the first resistor and then they have to split. And um, when they leave in the battery, they have 72 volts in their pocket. Think about it if it was money. So by the time they get home, they have to spend 72 volts. So if they're leaving, there are eight of them who left the battery. Some of them will go through four ohm resistor and then come back home. But the total voltage they have to spend is 72. They spent 48 on the first resistor, so what's left is 24 volts. They have to spend 24 volts between point A and B. Either they took the route through the 4 ohm resistor or 12 ohm resistor, it doesn't matter. So they would spend, um, they would spend 48 volts right here then those that go through 4 ohm resistor, they would spend the rest of the 24 and then come back home. And those who chose to go through the 12, they also have to spend another 24 before they get home. So they also will spend 24 volts. Um, so when they ask you the current in the battery for the first part of the question, the current in the battery we calculated is 8 amps the current in the 10 ohm resistor for the next part so if i want to know the current in the 10 ohm resistor i'm going to come back to my first circuit right here here is my a and here is my b and the voltage between my a and b is uh, 24 volt so 24 divided by the 4 i will get 6 amps going through that resistor. There were 8 amps leaving the battery. And 8 amp amps were coming to the point A. And then 4 of them went through the 4 ohm resistor. That means that way I only have 2 of them going through that resistor. So 2 amps will go through that resistor. And if I know um, oh, and then they ask me, they only ask me the current through the second resistor, through the 10 ohm resistor. So this one is, uh, through the 10 ohm resistor, I have 2 amps right here. And then uh, potential difference across the 10 ohm resistor, that would be the potential difference on between the points A and B, which is 24 volts. And then for the second case, they say switch S is closed and the capacitor is connected. After some time, the currents reach um, constant values. 
under these conditions determine the charge on the capacitor and the energy stored in the capacitor. So in order to calculate the charge on the capacitor, I have to look at my circuit this way. After the, so if they close the switch, uh, for some time, the current was floating through the capacitor. But when the capacitor is fully charged, it's the same as having the switch open. So that means the voltage on the capacitor is going to be the same as the voltage on 10 ohm resistor. Here, right here, we calculated the voltage on AB. So this was the voltage on AB. So between A and B, that was 24 volts. And the current in this circuit was 2 amps. So if this was A and this is B, and if I call this one C and this one e is D, then the voltage, uh, that would be the answer. The voltage between C and D is the voltage on 10 ohm resistor, which is the current 2 times the resistance 10. And that gives you 20 volts. So when the capacitor is fully charged, that means the voltage on the capacitor matches the voltage between points C and D and equals to 20 volts. Because we know the capacitance of the capacitor is 3 microfarad, I can use the formula where the capacitance is equal to how much charge stored when the potential difference is applied on two plates. So if I want to calculate the charge on the capacitor, I have the charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage. The capacitance of the capacitor is 3 microfarad, micro stands for 10 to the negative 6, times the voltage, which is 20. And that will give me 60 microfarad. So I'm just going to write it here, 60 microcoulombs, because charge is me measured in coulombs. So that's going to be 60 microcoulombs. Um, so that one is for the charge on the capacitor, and then the energy stored in the capacitor. For the energy formula, the potential energy stored in the capacitor, we can use the formula, which is 1 half CV squared. So I have one half. The capacitance is three micro. The capacitance is three micro, negative six. And times the voltage squared, which is 20 squared. And I will get six times 10 to the negative four joules. So that would be the energy stored on the capacitor. And that is all that they had for this question from 1988 AB Physics B. And if you like and learn from my videos, subscribe and thank you for watching and I hope I will see you in my next videos.